So many of you guys have been wondering about the, our birth story. We are three months postpartum. You are. <laughs> right, right. So I'll tell you all how it started. It started with Aldoan driving 80 miles per hour down 20 to get me to the hospital. Uh, be, because, tell them why. Tell them why you put us in that situation. Well, so it actually started off the day before. So Monday of that week. I went to the doctor for, I was gonna be 41 weeks on that Wednesday. So we went to the doctor for my, for my final appointment. And the doctor said, look Mecca, you are not moving further along. He has not dropped. And she said, unfortunately, I know that you did not want to hear this news, but you're going to have to be scheduled for a C-section. That's what we feel most comfortable about. We feel that it's probably the best thing knowing your past history with Trinity getting stuck. Right, so our, um, our daughter, I middle daughter mm -hmm. right we have three children mm -hmm. right six 15 yes. soon to be 16 15 5 and three months right yes. and so trinity being born came out with all kinds of complications yeah cord around the neck fecal matter heart rate dropping from I that had to have an episiotomy. episiotomy not breathing when she first came out mm -hmm. You you name oh yeah, she, and, so she and, she in, yeah, she and she got stuck and she got stuck in the birth canal, canal. Mm -hmm. and what do you call it when you break the shoulder um, shoulder dis dysplasia I think yeah, something yeah. like that mm -hmm. so oh, all that happened mm -hmm. it was not it was not the, the video that you see on TV so anyway right. so all that as a backdrop mm -hmm. and then we know that Christian is trending bigger right than than Trinity like right. much bigger right. right right and so we're thinking about all and so the doctors are are telling you what their recommendation is. Which is a C-section. Of course, ladies, you know, for me, I was very emotional because I wanted this spa, tranquil environment with the meditation, the jazz music going, the aromatherapy in the air, the dim, the dim lit, lit lights. And the OR is not that situation. You have bright lights, people masked up, gloved up, gowns on. Yeah. It's sterile environment. And, and it's I didn't the want heart that. of COVID, too. So we're in the heart of COVID, right. in Christian. I'm talking about the heart, right? right. Oh, for like, sure. Like on the, on the unit, was out of 16 moms that gave birth, right. 11 of them had COVID. 11 mothers so, had COVID. So I mean, we're yeah. just we're trying to avoid that at all costs. Absolutely. And so that happened Monday. And so I prayed about it. I said, God, yes, I'm going to make the best, best decision. I told the doctor, I went ahead and scheduled a C section because I trusted my physician yeah and but I said God you know what I've been envisioning what I've been praying for and so that Tuesday morning I woke up and started off the morning great we were talking in the bed right and then I started having cramps and I said well that's odd and I knew that they did not want me to go into labor because they wanted me to go in on Wednesday for the c-section so I immediately called and said hey I'm cramping should I be concerned you, you know what you forgot is that the only reason we were home is because COVID was so high mm -hmm. and the number of deliveries were so high. Right. We had to wait we three to wait. days to yeah. even have. Right, to be scheduled for the C-section. So, so yeah. we basically like we were at like, I'm not gonna say it was a danger, mm -hmm. but it was a high risk. Cause, right. But they had no more C-sections. That's right. how crazy right. it was. Right, yeah, no. And so I started cramping and then I said, well, let me just see, cause this doesn't feel like contractions. This just feels like cramps, but this, but it is something and I haven't been having anything. <laughs> I have a high pain tolerance, y'all. I have a high pain tolerance. I mean, we're, what did you think it was? I don't know. But the thing that actually made me concerned, I called the doctor once and they said, okay, well maybe, you know, you're just having some contractions starting. But when I really got concerned was I went to the bathroom and I was bleeding. And so my mind went all over the place with that. And I was just like, okay, this is not a good sign at all. Right. And at that point, immediately I knew we were going to the hospital, regardless of what Miss South Central was going to say <laughs> over here about waiting it out, paying time. Oh, no, I'm not listening to any of that. And I think as men, you know how to move. Right. And this is something you, you know, as husbands, you know, being protectors mm -hmm. of, of your wife. Sometimes you have to protect them mm -hmm. against themselves, right? right? Are you, yes. Like work for, with them. What's the right, right terminology? I don't, right. I don't, I don't cancel you me, are, baby. No, right. you, are the, you are my mirror when I'm unable to see myself. Right, right. Yes. So I knew at that point we are going to the hospital because it's likely contractions right. based on the timing and the rational piece and the fact that you were wincing in pain, which you never do. Right, so we're so at flying, that point, we're yes, flying down 20. Right. Out of one hops out the car at Emory, Midtown, he throws the police officer the keys, and I'm like, that's not the valet person. Aldewan's like, does not care. We go into the hospital. They're trying to give me a wheelchair, and I'm like, my ego and my pride would not let me uh, take the wheelchair because I've been working out this entire pregnancy. I was like, no, I'm good. Something's no just going on right now. 
we get up to labor and delivery and there's on the phone like the 41 weekers here she's the one that's you know bleeding and having cramps and so they immediately bring us back and they say oh um ma'am you're in active labor and you're three centimeters so not too far along but the process is starting the baby is coming today right. they're like you're having right. this baby today right so that changes <laughs> The perspective on a C-section. So we yeah. had to make an immediate decision about what to do. And we're in a dilemma between do we listen to our very wise primary care physician. Well, the like doctor, OBQIN right. that we've had forever. And and then the new data the that's new coming doctor, yeah. from, from... The doctor's Amy, only met me one time. And all of black girl magic. Yes. Mm. <laughs> so that helped. I'm going to be honest because of the more... Because of the doctors not listening right. to black women about right. their body. So that made us feel comfortable. But they're saying two different things. Right. So I have my doctor that's seen me throughout my pregnancy once I found out I was pregnant. Um, who she's, she's saying C-section because there's a reason why the baby has not dropped. Because of the size. Because of the size. Um, and then I also have the new doctor that's meeting me for the first time, a midwife that's saying, based off of everything we've read, we've read all your charts, we think you can push this baby out on your own. And so now I've gone... However, they say it, we do notice that mm -hmm. with your previous delivery, mm -hmm. that you did have the brachial yes. tear of the shoulder, yes, that, yes, that you uh -huh. did have the cord around the neck, right. did have the episiotomy. Right, did... right, right, yeah, right. So dilemma. Yeah, it is. And so I prayed about it, Aldoan prayed about it, and I asked Aldoan what his thoughts were because I didn't want it to be just me making, because I didn't want to make the bad decision. Yeah of saying, hey, let me do this, God not being a part of it, and then Christian getting stuck. I didn't want that to be on me, so I asked Aldewan. This, this is why we keep God first, right? Mm -hmm. As a man, we talk about submission. You have to submit to God. Like, a wife should not submit to you if you're not going to the Father about what you should do. Mm -hmm. She's asking me about what to do at birth. What do I know? Mm -hmm. I'm a psychologist. I don't, I'm not an MD, mm -hmm. right? I'm not Kanye up in this piece thinking I know everything. You know, no, no well, that was shade. But anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. No, no intentional shade. <laughs> don't, don't slap me, Kanye, right? Right? Even though Kanye gets slapped back. All right. So, so uh, I prayed. I prayed about it. And mm -hmm. I said, God, tell me what to do. I don't know. Whatever you tell me to do, help me mm -hmm. protect my wife and help me to protect our son. Yes. And he said, defer to Mecca. Yes. And when he came back, I was nervous again, because I don't want to make the wrong decision, but I made it. And I said, you know, God show me. And I, we, we both went in silence and in prayer and God told me you can do this. And so I was like, all right, God said I can do it. And so the nurse, the doctor, they said, take her off the schedule for the C-section. We have a lot of people that want to get on, on before the end of the year for the C-sections. And she said, but I need for you to work with us. He is still up very, very high. And I need for you to put in the work by doing squats. I need you to turn on the Cupid Shuffle. I need you to squat throughout the entire song. So I was squatting for eight hours. Yeah. And hanging off the bed. Yeah. So on. they did a technique. Um, and I can't think of the name of it, the name of the technique, but well, it's really where you're like a sheets. Superman. Yeah. You're, you're suspended. They lift the bed up. They put and the you, sheets under your mm -hmm. arm and let you, and you have to hold them off the bed. Right. So I'm, I'm suspended hang. off the bed like this because they're dropping the baby so, down. Yeah. So I feel like I should get paid for that. <laughs> All right. Eight hours of holding. I'm glad, I'm glad I was in the gym before then. Right. It's, and that's why they say. And, and in COVID, there weren't a lot of nurses. Now they, we had a great team. Right. Oh, we had a nice But different, team. different from Mercedes, Trinity, where they in, when they in and out right. in COVID. No, it's nah, not a whole lot of in Nah, you in there. I just don't think that any woman should give birth Alone. on her own. That, yeah. that, yeah. I already felt that way just emotionally, mm -hmm. but like physically in cases like that, like mm -hmm. that's not, that's not, that's not. I don't even care if you don't like the woman. Right. Right. You need to be there to bring your your child right. into this world to be able to support her if she allows you. Which Absolutely. She probably would unless y'all just Absolutely. Toxic. And then I would also say the biggest thing is too for us is we did hire a doula. I thought I did not need one at all with Trinity, but I realized that I did need one, especially this time around with the maternal mortality rate with black women. And I wanted to make sure I had an extra advocate because of the pandemic and because of the lack of nurses in the hospital. Yeah. And so it's, um, you know, eight hours of going through it. I promised Aldewan that this time around, because for Trinity, I was in labor for 13 hours, 12 of which were unmedicated. And the 12th hour, I said, okay, bring me the epidural. I can't do this anymore. Well, actually, they said, they were like, okay, you're going to fall asleep. We need you to have energy. We don't think you're going to have the energy to push her out. So this time around, eight hours in, I said, okay, I can't take this pain anymore. I've been doing these squats for eight yeah. hours now. I'm really in a lot of pain. 
I don't think I can continue to make it. And I don't know when he is going to actually come. So they came in. They had to break my water because my water didn't right, break. Right. So they had to come in and physically break my water. And um, I said, all right, let's get the team in. Yeah. And so this time around, they let Aldewan stay in when they were doing the epidural, which was another thing in itself. Right. That was another moment for me mm -hmm. because there was the doctor and then the doctor assistant or something. He was like a tech or something that was also an anesthesiologist yeah, and they or were somewhere around there. I'm going to go check. I'm going to let you do. I'm going to go check on him. I think I hear him. Do you hear him? Okay. Yeah. So go so, ahead. Right yep, go ahead. So, um, so the doctor comes in, the anesthesiologist comes in and she puts the needle in my back. Aldoan was sitting directly across from me on the couch and I remember feeling like this balloon-like pain, like something was shooting up inside of my back, but like a balloon, almost like expanding a balloon. I knew what an epidural felt like before, so I knew that that was not the feeling I was supposed to be feeling. So immediately I told the doctor, I was like, something's wrong. And she told me to describe it to her. It felt like a balloon being expanded underneath my skin. And she said, no, that's not right on the left-hand side. Then she put the epidural, the needle in my back again to adjust it, and she said, she said, um, I, I felt the same thing. I felt the shooting pain, like a balloon raising the skin on my back on the right side. And this really obviously made me nervous. And so then she did it again to adjust it. I'm looking at Aldoan and, and he's I'm, fine. He just I'm very, very concerned. Knocking up against him. Oh, okay. Camera with it on. Okay. Your so, son. <laughs> I'm, I'm very concerned because I'm like, does this doctor not know what she's doing? And I, I, I started crying like a little yeah. bit and she said, what's wrong? And I said, I'm concerned because those were three times that I was poked with the needle to get the needle in the right position. And she asked me, she said, do you have scoliosis? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I have mouth scoliosis. And then she did a little tweak and then they gave me the medicine. Yeah. And, and, but I saw them, mm -hmm. right? And I saw that they weren't panicked. And what, what it was, was they were talking about administrative stuff mm -hmm. and that's what aggravated you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They were like... But I saw that they were yeah because I because I heard um her say, heard her sign. say you have to sign off on the paper so we don't get sued and all I heard was sign off on the paper so so we don't get sued but she was talking about just the formalities of not what was going on with me at the time but making her sign while she was doing the procedure but it's checks and balances right now. so I saw them joking about it I saw the looks that's why I was telling them I said calm it's not. Even though she's sticking you three times, she's mm -hmm. not incompetent, right? right? And the right. comment that you just heard, this is called knowing your wife. Mm -hmm. Comment you just heard was them talking about administrative stuff, not being fearful of being sued because they don't know what they're doing. Right, right. So eighth hour, got the epidural. Fast forward, they're doing different now because my legs are not moving. So now they're doing different types of switching back and forth to, to get the baby to continue to shift down. And then finally, in the 13th um, hour, really it was 14 hours total of labor, they came in, they said, oh, we can actually um, see the baby. The baby's hair is sticking out. <laughs> and uh, first they said hair. I said, now I know I shave. So I know it's not to about my That's hair. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> but the baby's hair is sticking out. And so they said, this, we we're ready for you to push. And so it was... Three, no, it was, it was 12 pushes. They had me push four times each set. And um, he was Men, he was men you don't know this, but they will ask you to grab your wife's leg. Yes. All right, for those of y'all who think y'all going to be just chilling, <laughs> right? Not chilling. You don't have the stomach for it. Um, get the stomach for it because you're not going to be able to sit in the lobby these days. Your wife needs you. Right. Uh, but they go, you're going to be an active part. Yes. Active uh, sometimes part you're part not, part. but a lot of times be prepared. There are a lot of men drop comments in. If you had to be an active participant in the labor, right? And you also, I'm just going to be full male. Can I be full okay, male? Okay, You also have to decide how much of the labor you want to see. Right, right, <laughs> like, right. Like, like, are you able to psychologically recover? Right, or if um, you want to stay up here, because I certainly this time around, which is what took so long for my recovery process, I tore. Um, and so them stitching me up, yeah. But, but I didn't see it all that we did yeah, together so we, long. We, we have been together. <laughs> but I will say this really quickly before we end, and that was our birthing story for Christian, is that I appreciate you catering to me throughout the time, especially during the active labor delivery part, making me feel like you were totally hands-on, doing the contractions with me, you know, being there supporting me. 
I appreciate you um, helping me because going back to not a lot of nurses, remember mm -hmm. they came in the following day and my legs still, I could not feel the sensation in my legs. And they said, well, we need for you to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I could not physically get up. And so Aldewan literally had to physically pick me up because the nurse was not going to try to pick me up. It was a woman. Right, right. She wasn't going to try to pick me up. And there was only, it was just her. So mm -hmm. you and her both had to help me get up. And it was in that moment, I felt like just having to relinquish and just, you know, rely on you and your support and your help meant a lot to me. And then even, you know, breastfeeding Christian, being hungry, like you feeding me um, in the hospital, and then you bringing in one of my favorite meals for like our celebration. The second day we were there, I'm um, going to poor Calvin's and picking up dinner for me. Um, I benefited I just, from that as well. I appreciate yes. it. Yes. I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thankful because I could not imagine. Baby I know there's so work. many women that go through those moments by themselves and it's so emotional. It's, it's mentally, it can be mentally taxing and there's so many decisions that have to be made. And so I'm thankful to have a partner by my side that, supported me we also had uh, i don't know if you talked about it when i was upstairs Reve, right yes yes the doula yeah i did right. mention okay. Reve was definitely there to support me and she was there as an advocate and two things i'm glad you brought Reve back up um two things is that she talked about the importance of delaying um cutting the cord so you know with that making sure that christian got all of his nutrients that he needed um, last time with Trinity, I actually donated the core blood. This time around, I did not. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I wanted to make sure she had, um, he had everything he needed. Um, and then also the importance of not um, taking the baby and washing the baby off um, initially. So we did skin to skin immediately. They literally took him out and put him on top of me because that layer of protection that they have, it gets into the skin and it helps also yeah, protect that's them That's a big too. dude too. Yes, he, he is. He pushed himself out. Towards the end. <laughs> he, did. he did. He was like, I'm tired of this. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he just pushed that. They were like, this baby is pushing himself. He's like, I got to, I had to go. And that's a big deal. I've seen our son. That's a big dude. That's, yeah. a, that's a big dude. Yes, he, right? is a, he is a big baby. So, so we're just excited about I appreciate that, babe. You did all the work. I mean, you mother Africa. That's your nickname. <laughs> um, and bringing us a son. Uh, mm -hmm. I would have felt the same way with a daughter. People mm -hmm. think that, you know, I was team son. I was, I was team three daughters, whatever. But God knows what he's doing and excited to bring a son into this world and excited to be able to support you. And just, just a quick note to be fully transparent. We had had a conversation about more support. Mm -hmm. Like, so y'all start talking about like conversations you need to have. And we talked about, all right, this time around, what adjustments do we need right. to make? Right. Talking as a couple and Mecca mm -hmm. being just straight up transparent. I need more from you. Right. Right. And I was like, I was team doula. Um, yeah. Some stuff I just won't be able to do. Just keep and, we, it above. and we went to our own therapist to right. talk through what that shift looked like. Right. And so that's important. You don't you don't want moments like that to be ruined. And if you know thyself, you know South Central by way of Decatur, right? You know we need to sit down and be proactive and say, all right, right what's our plan? What are your needs? Mm -hmm. What are your expectations? What can you do? What am I equipped to do? What right. am I willing to do so that we can be in tune with one another? All right. Absolutely. That's right. So as y'all as y'all get ready to have be fruitful and multiply. Yes. And and for couples that's been through this, uh, there's couples out there that are we talking about we're veterans. No, you know, couple at five, six, right. seven, ten, you know, uh that understand this. So be there for your your wives, your girlfriends, mm -hmm. uh as men. As men mm -hmm. and wives, girlfriends, communicate your needs to your man Absolutely. about what you need in that birthing room. Absolutely. Right. So that's our birthing story. We hope that you all enjoyed and we hope that our transparency helps you all throughout the process too. And Christian is a healthy baby boy. Yes, he is. Love all you, right. baby. Oh, I love you too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>